Hi guys, so I wanted to go over um, example two and example five from our 5.7 uh, note sheets. So we started this in class, but I just wanted to start from the beginning again in case someone didn't get all of this or was absent or um, didn't understand the little part of the example we did in class. So I'm going to do uh, most of this example and then also like I said example 5 talking about even and odd functions so uh, first of all what we want to do in example 2 is examine the average rate of change for nonlinear function over particular intervals so we're gonna rely on this formula down here which is basically the same formula you learned in Algebra 1, just written in function notation. It's basically this one. Okay. Uh, except we're talking about uh, something in function notation, and we're not going to be doing this with linear functions. We're going to be doing this with nonlinear functions. So the example they have here is f of x equals log base 3 of x. And you can see we can't find the slope of the whole function, of course, because it curves and the slope changes. So uh, here they demonstrate finding the slope between two points, finding the slope between two other points on a different interval, and the slope between a third set of points on a different interval. And this, you can see the slope changes, and uh, so we can't just find one slope for the entire function like we did for linear functions. So, uh, what we'll do is go ahead and do this example, and so we'll find the slope for each interval. So they give us an interval, so this will be an x1, an x2, x1, x2, x1, x2, and so on. Okay, and what we're going to do is use that x1 and x2 uh, to plug it into this formula, which is basically the formula for slope, um, rise over run, and just find the slope for each interval. And then we're going to answer the question, what does this mean for the graph? Okay, without actually graphing it. You should know what this looks like, but uh, without actually graphing it, we're going to try and answer that question. All right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we see for the first interval, we have this. 0 0.125 to 0 0.25. This is x1, this is x2. And what we're going to do is go ahead and plug that into our function. Now the formula, just to refresh your memory, is f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. That's what we had right here. Okay? And so we're going to do this, but we're going to take the, the function they provided to us, this one, and we're going to substitute that into the function. So I'm going to plug this in down here and get negative log base 2 of x2, which is 0 0.25. Uh, and then the formula has a minus, so right here is a minus so I'm using that minus and then I'm going to put a parenthesis and plug the function in again over here this time I'm just going to use x1 so x1 for us is 0 0.125 okay we get that it says divide by x2 which is 0 0.25 minus x1 which is 0 0.125 remember the way this works x1 must always be smaller than x2 it's the way that we've we learned this this way we talked about increasing and decreasing earlier so let's see if we can get this on the calculator this time so um, you want to just enter this whole thing into your calculator okay so I'm gonna go do that with you so you do um, this put a parenthesis and do negative uh, math log base log base 2 of first one is 0 
to 5, and then uh, minus, and then put a parenthesis again. Now we're going to do the second part, the second function, negative math log base of 2, log base 2 of 0 0.125. Uh, there's that, and then we have to close another parenthesis. Okay, so we have to keep make sure we have all our parentheses uh, taken care of here. So we have another one here in the front. So I have to put another one in the back, uh, and then divide by put this in parentheses again. Zero point two five minus 0 0.125 and if we do that we get an answer which is negative 8 which that's correct so uh, this is equal to negative 8 that seems like a lot of work we're going to do it for a lot of intervals but once you've got it in your calculator you just change a few numbers and it's actually not that bad so uh, let's do the next interval so we did this interval uh, here would be the next interval all right, so we have uh, 0 0.25 to 0 0.5. Again, this will be my x1, this will be my x2. x1 is always the first one, x2 the second one. And I'm not going to write this whole function down again. I'm just going to do the substitution. All right, so let's do the substitution. I have negative log base 2 of x2, which is 0.5 minus negative log base 2 of x1, which is 0 0.25. And put that all over x2, which is 0 0.5, minus 0 0.25. And again, you're doing this on your calculator. So you go back to your calculator. But now we can just arrow up twice and hit enter and just bring this down the previous entry and just go change the numbers so we have everything there all we have to do is change the numbers so this just changes to 0.5 um, this changes to 0 0.25 so we can just delete that and this just changes to uh, 0.5 as well and this is 0.25 okay and hit enter there, and that's correct. Negative 4 is what you get. So you go back here, this is negative 4. Right? And so on and so on and so on. I'm going to uh, write the rest of the intervals out for you, but I trust that you can do that on your calculator now without me. Maybe I'll do one more with you. Here we go. Let's do one more together uh, by substitution and on the calculator. So if I go from 0.5 to 1, Again, this is x1, this is x2, uh, and substitute directly into the function. Same thing, negative log base 2 of 1 minus negative log base 2 of 0.5 all over 1 minus 0.5. And do that in your calculator. Uh, let's do that. Again, just go up twice, enter, go back to the beginning of the expression, and just change it. So now we have 1, take those two out, minus 0.5, uh, and then 1, so fix this, minus 0.5. And enter there, and you get negative 2, which is correct. So go back here and do negative 2. Now, if you proceed this way uh, for the other two intervals, so let me clean this up a little bit. We've got a lot going here. Um, we have already done a whole bunch of stuff. So we have to answer this question. What does this mean for the graph? But, uh, you know, we've done this interval, this interval, this interval. So there's two more remaining intervals. Uh, and if you plug that in, 
I'm going to do this fairly quickly, assuming that you're okay with what x1, x2 is right now. So log base 2 of 2 minus negative log base 2 of 1 all over 2 minus 1. And if you do that on your calculator, you get negative 1. And then last interval is 2, 4. And if you do that on your calculator, negative or substitute, I mean uh, negative log base 2 of 4 minus negative log base 2 of 2 over 4 minus 2. And if you do all this, you end up with negative 0 0.5. Okay. So what this tells us, now the important thing we have to get out of this is what does this mean? Uh, we basically did this process right here. We found a bunch of slopes. Okay, and as you can see here, when the slopes are all positive, the function is what we called earlier in the day increasing. Okay, the function is increasing, so it's rising from left to right. That's what we said is our loose definition of increasing. It's doing that, and so here we have a different situation. Uh, every slope that I have or every average rate of change that I have is negative. So what this means is that the function or the graph okay, is decreasing uh, for all intervals that we calculated. All right, decreasing because all the slopes are negative so you can say it's decreasing. Uh, and furthermore, because the slopes are getting um, smaller in magnitude, so the absolute value of this slope is going from 8 to 4 to 2 to 1 to 0 0.5, uh, what that tells me is that the function uh, is decreasing. Um, slower, okay, uh, as x as x increases, okay. So um, what this says is that the slope is still uh, the function is still decreasing, but it's decreasing at a slower rate as x increases. So. Uh, it's not this situation. If we were to graph this function, let me see if I can zoom in here and do it. If we were to graph this function, okay, uh, because it's negative, we know that if you have negative log base 2 of x, it's actually reflected across the x-axis, so it looks something like this. All right? And what we're saying is, this shows clearly that the function is decreasing over our intervals that we've broken into, but it's decreasing at a slower rate. So here it was decreasing at rate negative 8. Here the slope was negative 4. Here the average rate of change was negative 2. Uh, then we got to negative 1 and eventually negative 0.5. So it's decreasing slower, but it's still decreasing. Okay, so that's what this type of analysis lets you conclude about uh, the graph without actually graphing it. This is not a real graph. This is just an approximate representation. Okay, so that's example two. Uh, please make sure that you do all this to show that you uh, understand the question. And this is what the minimum required work is when you get a question like this. All right, so let's uh, go ahead to example five, and that talks about uh, even and odd functions. Uh, so we can quickly read over this. It says, uh, a function is even, is an even function, if when I substitute negative x into the function, I get back the same function as the original. Right? And then it says the graph of an even function, so an even function is symmetric about the y-axis. And here is an example of an even function. Okay, So the y-axis uh, divides it in half exactly, two exact same halves, all right? So even function, algebraically, substitute negative x 
if you get back the original function you started with, then we call it even, and it's symmetrical about the y-axis. Uh, an odd function, so let me take this out, an odd function, all right, uh, an odd function works this way. If I substitute negative x into the function, I get the negative of the original function. Okay, so and also uh, the next thing is that an odd function is symmetric about the origin. So here's a picture of an odd function being symmetric about the origin. All right. So what that means is uh, this point over here and this point over here are reflected across the origin, right? Reflected across the origin. This point over here and this point over here are reflected across the origin, right? So this function is symmetric about the origin. All right, so even function, if I do this and I get f of x back, or I see the graph and it's symmetric about the y-axis, I know it's even. Uh, odd function, if I substitute negative x and I get back the negative of the original function, I know it's an odd function. Or if I look at the graph, I can see that the function is symmetric about the origin. I know it's an odd function. All right. So that's the gist of what you need to know for this. Let's actually crank through some of the um, actual algebra to make sure you understand that. Okay. So example five says, uh, determine whether it's the function is even, odd, or neither. Right, so obviously, what does neither mean in this case? Uh, that means that if I follow this process uh, by substituting a negative into the function and I get neither this nor this, then the function is neither odd nor even. And that happens sometimes. We have an example like that here. So let's uh, do the algebra and see what happens. Right, so the question says determine whether function is even, odd, or neither. So if you plug in a negative x, Okay, into the function, what happens? So let's see, we get negative x cubed minus seven times negative x. And that is, remember, a negative raised to an odd power is negative, and then x to the third power is x to the third power. And here I have negative times negative positive seven x. So uh, what do I have? It, how do these two functions relate? That's the question. How do these two functions relate? Okay. Right now, maybe not so clear, but what you can do is say, uh, if I factor out a negative, I get this. All right. So if I factor out a negative, after doing my substitution, I get this. Well, this is the original function, f of x over here, is just that. So basically what I did is I got negative and this function here is the original function, f of x. So what I said basically, if you carry this down, is f of negative x gave me the negative of the original function. And by our definition, that means the function must be odd. Okay, so again, f of negative x equals negative f of x. By our original definition up here, if f of negative x equals negative f of x, then it's an odd function. Okay, so that's what happened. So we call this function odd. That means if you graph this uh, letter A, that would be a graph that's symmetric about the origin. All right, so let's try another one. Do this one, uh, same procedure, g of negative x, see what happens. I get 6 over negative x plus 1. Now, this is not the same. I can't factor out a negative at the bottom and make the function somehow look like the original function. There's not really much I can do there. Um, and also, the function doesn't look like the original function. So it's definitely not even, right? And it's definitely not odd because these two functions are not related to each other that way. Okay, so uh, six over negative x plus one 
is not the negative of 6 over x plus 1. Uh, and they're not equal either. So because they don't relate that way, uh, it's not even or odd, so then it must be neither. All right? Neither. So let's try another one for the last type. Uh, and that is, again, take this and just substitute negative x in there. Let me pick a different color. So let's substitute negative x in there. See what we get. Negative negative x to the sixth power plus three times negative x to the fourth power minus two times negative x to the second power minus seven. Okay, so I'm making this substitution everywhere where there's an x. And then what you get is negative and a negative to an even power is positive. So that goes away. And then I have x to the sixth power plus three times negative to an even power is positive again and x to the fourth power is just x to the fourth power minus two times negative to an even power is positive again so just x to the second minus seven okay uh, and so what happened here so if you look at this carefully uh, this function and this function are identical it's the same thing. So after I substituted f of negative x into the function, what we're saying is I came to the conclusion that that's equals to f of x. So we have f of negative x equals f of x. But let's go back to our original definition here. When that happens, f of negative x is f of x. It's an even function. Okay. So this function is even. Um, and again, if you want to verify this, you can graph it on your calculator. You can graph this one on your calculator and make sure it's symmetric about the y-axis. And graph this one on your calculator. Let me clean this up a little bit. Graph this one on your calculator and verify that it is symmetric about the origin. Okay? You can do that and satisfy your curiosity. All right? So that's how those work, guys. Very important for pre-calculus and calculus for sure. So uh, that's the end of that lesson. I hope this helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.